Hi there, everybody. Uh, this is Lighting the Way, Granny Raps and Rocks. And um, things are not working exactly right tonight, but we're closer. I can't uh, play the piano in stereo, and we're sharing a microphone. So, but anyway, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So, so glad to see you. Anyway, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, where our ideas come from. I mean, and it's like, get honest, are you influenced by the mob? And we're going to have a lot of fun with this show, but first, James is going to talk to us. Hello there, James Maynard here, otherwise known as Sweet Baby James. You have come to Lighting the Way with Granny Raps and Rocks. The granny uh, shares with us her wit, her wisdom, and a very uncommon sense. So stay with us, and uh, feel free to chat with us. Uh, we'll see your chats, and Beth can respond to you if you're live in person. Otherwise, afterward, between now and the next show or whatever, you play, put a comment in, and she will respond to you. Hi there. Well, <laughs> I think it was last week we couldn't even use this computer, so we're very close, I think, to having this work. So are you ready to have a little fun with yourself and be ruthlessly honest? I hope so. And I also hope that we are, in fact, broadcasting, and we will find that out in one second. Oh, yes. Yay! Yes, we are. Okay. And we have some comments already. Yes, indeed. Catalina says good evening. Good evening and sends a heart of love. Thank you, Catalina. Good evening. <laughs> and Elizabeth says hello and sends her heart of love also. Wonderful. And Tracy says hello with a big exclamation mark. And sends her heart of love and caring. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Tracy. And here we have Todd, who says, Hi, Beth and James. Nice to see you. Audio only coming into one channel to left channel. Weird listening with headphones. <laughs> yes, it's pretty funny. But I had no channels at all. I mean, I had the piano was perfect, right? And now the piano is not going to be perfect. But then we had no microphones. So... <laughs> By the way, Elizabeth s says, Todd, same here. And also, she says, uh, sound is a bit aloft or soft, uh, off. Probably. Soft, yes. Yeah, okay, soft. how's that? How's that? I turned up the microphones, I hope. All right. She said soft. Yes. Oh, that was correcting the previous okay. word. Yeah. So, anyway, I hope that this is working now. Okay, thank you, James. Yes. Okay, better? A little bit more, and here we are. So, you know, when we were kids, do you remember what girls would say about boys and what boys would say about girls? Like, boys would say, oh, girls are stupid, right, or that kind of thing. Or sissies. Or sissies. Well, they would say that weak. girls were sissies. Yeah, weak, stupid, something. And then girls would say, oh, boys are what did what did we used to say about boys? Dumb. Dumb, stupid. You know, we and we had all these opinions, didn't we? So mean. Mean, grungy, and um, we had these opinions. And where did we get them from? Each other. Uh, can you hold this? Oh, uh, is that too hard? A little bit closer to my mouth. Yeah, so okay. So I can look at the people. Yes. So uh, we would uh, we would spout these opinions with absolute uh, certainty, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Todd says it's better, by the way. Oh, good! I'm glad to hear that. Okay, good. So we got everything working except the sound. <laughs> anyway, uh, almost. Oh, and look, we have another comment already. Oh, Amy says girls are icky and have cooties. <laughs> Boys are mean, and if they're mean to you, it means they like you. Oh, right. <laughs> Great. So anyway, I hope the piano doesn't sound too terrible. It's probably coming in on one channel. That's because I couldn't get the channels working on this program. The program is dumb, obviously. <laughs> it is. And also mean. Oh, 
so mean, but so very dumb. Very <laughs> dumb. Anyway, it, you know, it didn't get any better. We uh, and we got these opinions from the mob. What really happens is that the mob changes as we get older. Okay, do you see what? Uh, Lizzie says uh, piano sounds very soft. That's because it's only coming through one channel, I guess. Okay. Okay, we have the piano. Hey, we did it, and we're here, and we're broadcasting. And I'm already offending people, so that means that we're right on track. So now, when I was a child, I knew absolutely, with no hesitation, that insects were now, in that case, who was the mob? Where did I get that from? Lillian Ingber, my mother. Your mother. Okay, that was my mother. My mother was afraid of insects. And so, of course, I thought they were disgusting and horrible, too. So did I have any experience with them directly? Well, I didn't like mosquitoes. And, you know, I didn't have bed bugs yet. I didn't get that until I was an adult. But it was like my mother's opinion that I just imitated, mimicked, didn't even notice, right? So that is one level on which we are impacted by the mob. And, you know, as we get older, it's like, he's cool, she's cool. I, I don't even know what words they use anymore. Th this one is hot, hot, rad, whatever. And, you know... Maybe you don't agree with that. Maybe you think he's he's an idiot and not cool. But do you even know? Do you even let yourself know? I mean, you certainly don't want to be an outsider in the group. So you absorb the opinions. And it is so strong in families. So we know that if your parents are Democrats, you're probably going to be a Democrat when you're a child, right? And if they're Republicans or if they're communists or whatever they are. And so we absorb all of this and we don't know it. So we are often absorbing ideas from other people and we, we say the same things and we actually believe that we believe this because we don't have the opportunity to think separately. We are too enmeshed with the people around us, whether it's you know, your social group or your family, your religion. Looks like we have. Oh, Amy says. When I was growing up, this shows how old I am, with a big smile. Girls were not supposed to call boys, but just had to wait by the phone for them to call. That's right. Weren't supposed to. That, that, that's a very important thing. What you're supposed to want, what you're supposed to like. Girls were supposed to like babies. I, I didn't, actually. And, uh, and so on. B and so now I want to go on to another level of this. Cause and she has one more comment about that. Sure. It's so easy to think that our beliefs are actually our own when they're generally not. Exactly the point. You've already gotten the point. Now, it gets very confusing if you have parents who have contradictory beliefs. Oh, my God. Who are you supposed to imitate then? So, you know, you're in trouble. Well, then you look at your friends. What do your friends think? What do your friends' families think? And, of course, it's not so much what your friends' family think as what do your friends think. That is really what the arbiter of truth. So <laughs> um, now th here's another point, though, which is even more scary. We are one. We may not know it, but we are, like, one organism, one human race and our th thoughts and brains are not discrete and separate. They impact one another. Especially in close relationships. That's right. Now, for instance, when you have twins, 
they are so like in tune with each other, right? Because they're from, you know, inception, conception, they have been together. But in very close relationships, it becomes very obvious that we don't know what we think, but we think we're thinking. And we may not be thinking at all. We may be picking up someone else's feelings. And if you think that that is only in close relationship, you are mistaken. You go on to Facebook or you're watching the news and somebody says something. And you're really upset. And you're thinking, I am really upset. But supposing it's not just that you are upset. How do you know that you're not picking up the thoughts, opinions, and feelings of everybody who is watching and reading the same thing? Pretty scary stuff. Now, I want to give you an example of this. How do, you, how do you like this r this reality? <laughs> Scary, crummy. In fact, what's even scarier is you've got microbes in your gut. How do you know that your thoughts are their thoughts? I mean, maybe <laughs> they're the ones who say, oh, you should eat this because this is going to feed us. Yeah, you really want that. Okay. So... I've been looking at a new keyboard, not a new piano, which I can only play out of one hand anyway right now. <laughs> okay. So everybody has been hyped up because this new keyboard was coming out and people have been waiting for an upgrade of this keyboard for six months years. So I went on to all the forums and because I wanted all the latest information too. I was really excited about this keyboard. And people were saying, oh, it's going to have this, it's going to have this, and it's going to have this, and it's going to have this. And where they got this idea, I don't know. They got it from each other. Seriously. You know, if you go back to it, who was the one who said it the first time? Well, I'm sure that the new Genos 2, which is the keyboard, is going to have a screen that tilts. Y you can push a button and it tilts. And, oh my God, the keyboard came out today. And it didn't have a tilting screen. It was tilted up, but it couldn't just go up and down. And they were furious. People were furious. Betrayed. It's no good. And there were one thing after another about what is wrong with this. Now, nobody has this keyboard, actually. Nobody. It just came out today. It just came out. And for, but half the people say, well, gee, I, I kind of like it, or I, I think I might like that. Those have the quiet voices. And the one who said, it sucks. It sucks. It's no good. I'm not going to get one of those. Oh, no. It isn't any better than the other one. It's no. Why should I should have the. I can play with two hands at the same time, right? And uh, I felt myself getting depressed because I'm listening to the hype, right? And uh, I don't really care if the screen goes up and down. It, it, if, if I can see it, I'll be happy. If I can see anything, I'm happy, right? <laughs> So, hey, I don't need this. So, um, this, but I'm picking up the energy of outrage, and it's not just the screen. It's not this. It's not that. It's, and mind you, nobody has it yet. Right. Nobody has it yet. And yet, all these opinions. All these opinions, and it's growing like a tsunami. Right. <laughs> it's going well, so I put in my little comment and I said well you know 
the things, that what I care about is the sounds. And they say that the sounds are amazing. They're even more amazing than they used to be. And I, I'm kind of interested. But I was so tentative in what I said. Whereas the people who are just trashing this poor keyboard, if, it, if the keyboard was listening, it would be so upset. You know, if it, they're louder, the louder, and it just becomes a groundswell of disapproval. And there, people were saying, shame on you, Yamaha. I am serious, vile comments. Shame on you, ha Yamaha. You only did this and this and this and this, but you didn't do what I expected. And so the mob, you see, and that is the thing that made me think of this topic tonight because I could see the mob. I could see the mob in action. Is there a bigger mob than Facebook? That's a pretty big one. That's a big mob. And uh, then you'll say, oh, God, that's inhumane. That's disgusting. That's so uh, terrible. That's what it is. And it, 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 it you know, uh, it just keeps growing. It keeps growing until it is like a cloud. And now you're sitting there. And you're trying to learn something. So you're going to a forum or onto Facebook or you're trying to get information. And you're so f filled up with people's opinions before you have had a, a chance to determine for yourself. And you will be impacted. Let me tell you, it doesn't mean you will necessarily be destroyed and that you won't think for yourself at all. But it is very tough to stand up to because what do they know that I don't know? So it's on the energetic level. We are just so impacted. Here's another example that uh, is so obvious. We, most of us, I'm not saying everyone, of course, most people believe that human beings have the right to consume or utilize anything or everything on the planet for our own purposes and for our survival. How many people are going to move out of a town because they realize that the coyotes have been displaced? And they say, I, I need to leave because the coyotes have been displaced. How honestly? That's because we are living in human society. Now, the coyotes, on the other hand, are saying, those people get out of our backyard. What's wrong with these people? Are you seeing what I'm saying? And we don't even question. Nationalism, our country is the best. Our country is the most important. We should have all the rights. Our families, like, I got to we got to take care of our own. It we all We should have most of the resources and the United States does. That's right. We should, right? <laughs> well, because this is our birthright, right? Because we're Americans, right? So it starts with something as silly as boys are stupid and girls are uh st weak or girls are stupid and boys are jerks or something like that. Or the neighbors next door uh, is dirty. Yeah, I remember distinctly going to a neighbor's house when I was a child, and this woman's house was dirty, according to the standards of my mother. Now, do I know whether there really was a problem? I have no idea, because I walked into that woman's house, and it was like, <coughs> Now, if anybody walked into our kitchen, what would they think? Ooh. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> you see what I mean? But my E is okay. It's their E is not, not okay. So from childhood, I was forming opinions about other people, about other races, about other religions. And then I had to fight my way out of that. Then we're fed more and more by... As I say, our mobs change. We begin to listen more to our friends, especially when we're teenagers. I mean, then we begin to realize parents are stupid, right? 
parents. Yeah, they're just not cool. They're not with it. They're not. They don't know anything. They've never, uh, they don't know anything. So then we have the parents are stupid. So we, the one mob has turned away against the other mob. And then if you work for a company, it's like our company is better than their company. And ha, ha, ha. And you actually don't think. I don't think. I am embarrassed by how scared I am of insects because of the way I grew up. You know, I don't like it, but I do it. But I look have to look at the deeper, deeper things. How many prejudices am I sitting with? And I don't even realize that those ideas didn't come from me. They didn't come from my experience. They may not even have come from my own family because as we get part of the bigger world, we are more and more influenced by larger and larger groups. So this kind of music is cool, but classical music is so boring. Right. But this music that you hear where they repeat the same notes, five notes, over and over, the same three chords over and that isn't boring. Classical music is boring, right? Because everybody says so, because everybody knows this. So it's all the opinions that we keep hearing over and over. And worst of all, it's our own connection to everyone that is so insidious that we don't even realize. Does anybody have an example about themselves that they would like to share with us? How about the tour? I can remember when I was in high school, I had a teacher who was very, very conservative. And she went on and on and on about what was wrong with liberal policies and spending and so much more than they ever said they were going to. And so I became convinced that you know, the, Christ, the conservative way of thinking was the right way to think. Then I went to college and I heard John F. Kennedy talk about uplifting themes and wanting to help people and improve society and sh share and share alike with others. And so then I started having the, those attitudes, diametrically opposite to the ones I'd had before. <laughs> Just because the influence was different. Right. Yeah, there you go. Also, I took a course in economics. This is well, what they were telling us before about the invisible hand, free enterprise, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, wasn't necessarily so. I mean, there was a whole other way that w the economy was working that they didn't know, and, and it was overly simplistic. So then I started believing that way, and on and on it goes. Absolutely, or socialism is bad, or because everybody, so. everybody says so, or capitalism is bad because my friends say so, or every... So why don't we look, I'm glad you gave that example. I hope that you're looking at yourself. Think about the influences on you. The, the uh, energetic connection that you have with people that, that invade your thinking, especially if you sleep with someone at night. You're like, uh, I will confess that it is extremely hard for me to know what I feel about anything. Because when James is sad, you feel it. I feel it. As if it were your own. As I, I think I'm sad. And then I'll spend the day running around saying, why am I sad? <laughs> why, why am I sad? Looks like we have another comment. Amy says, there was a time where if my mom had a suggestion for me, I would purposely do the opposite. And she did the same. We were so dumb. Very good. Very good, same phenomenon, but a different reaction. And something had given you the idea that that is the way you should do it. So guys, we're coming to the end of our time. Uh, by next week, I should have this figured out about why the channels didn't show up. But I'm grateful that we were able to broadcast it all and uh, that we made it. Hey, we do not give up easy, do we? Watch your thoughts and see where they come from. For example, you may have the idea that you should never give up. Well, maybe you should. <laughs> you know, where did you get that idea? How many, how many inspirational blogs have you seen or symbols or something where, which tell you that you should never or you should follow your dreams? You know, sometimes following your dreams is going to lead you into the biggest wave crashing down on you 
that you've ever seen because you're not thinking, you're not using your brain to see whether your dream has any relationship to reality. See, bro, but it's in the collective consciousness. Watch it. See what, the, what you're reading. See what the people are thinking around you. See whether you are thinking the same way. Be honest to yourself. And come back next week for Lighting the Way, Granny Raps and Rocks, where I'm going to have this problem solved yeah. and see what other problems we're going to have instead. And what about tomorrow night? Tomorrow night <laughs> is Magical Improvs, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific time where I play the piano, I just improvise, and James sings, and he improvises. And you'll be doing it with both hands tomorrow night. Both hands. Wow. Yes, because that one I've got already figured out how to do. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Don't ask why I couldn't get it done today. But obviously, uh, we were able to do enough to get by. And you know, right now, that feels good enough to me. So... Join the conversation, put in your comments. Remember that if this is after the show, I cannot speak to you live, and, but uh, when you write in your comment, I will respond later. I think that's it. I think that's it. So thank you. Please like or love this show. Please share this program. Do you think that there are other people out there in the world who need to hear this message? If so, have courage. Don't worry about what they're going to think about you. Just share it and follow our page and come back and tell all your friends about us <laughs> and the work that we do. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.